Washington, D.C. City of Majesty, Monuments and Memorials. Our nation's capital is found on the east coast of the United States. It's located in the District of Columbia. The Potomac River runs through the city and can be seen from many vantage points around town. Surrounding Washington is the state of Maryland and across the Potomac River is the state of Virginia. The city itself measures 67 square miles and has a population of almost 600,000 people. The land that forms the seat of the American government was donated by the state of Maryland in order to form the District of Columbia in Washington, D.C. Even before there was a city, there was a plan. Washington was a planned city, which helps to account for the beauty of the layout and the architecture of the buildings. A trip to Washington, virtual or otherwise, is to immerse yourself in the history of the United States. The city is seemingly dedicated to honoring the many important people who had a role in shaping the country into what it is today. We will group our visit to Washington into five categories. Honoring past presidents, honoring those who have served, the seat of power of the United States, sharing of national treasures, and notable sites around town. The honors begin with the United States' first president, George Washington. He earned the privilege of having the country's capital named after him. He also has a monument dedicated to him, a soaring 555-foot tower, or obelisk, that seems to touch the sky. It also holds a world record for being the tallest masonry structure in the world, along with being the tallest obelisk. At its base are 50 flags that ring around the monument, one for each state. The monument took over 100 years from conception to completion. You can ride to the top in an elevator and get a spectacular view of the whole city and the surrounding areas. As much as Washington loves its first president, Abraham Lincoln also occupies a place of reverence in the city. He has been honored with the title of the Great Emancipator for taking such an unwavering stance in the abolition of slavery. His strength of character led the Union through the Civil War. The memorial to Abraham Lincoln has a place of great prominence at the head of the reflecting pool. The building itself is a modified Greek-style structure inspired by the Parthenon in Athens. One wall of the memorial is inscribed with Lincoln's inaugural address, and the opposite wall contains the Gettysburg Address, his most famous speech. This larger-than-life statue of Lincoln was sculpted by Daniel Chester French. Standing at 19 feet tall, it has a lifelike and imposing quality, yet his gaze is paternal and protective. The 36 columns that surround the memorial represent the 36 states in the Union at the time of his death. Next on the list is the Jefferson Memorial, a tribute to the third president, Thomas Jefferson. This gifted man was well known as a scientist, inventor, architect, diplomat, musician, book collector, horticulturalist, political philosopher, and of course, President of the United States. By his own account, his proudest achievement is that of being the primary author of the Declaration of Independence. Etched on the walls of the memorial are Jefferson's words from the Declaration of Independence. His bronze statue stands 19 feet tall, weighs 10,000 pounds, and shows him clutching the Declaration of Independence in his hand. 
The next presidential memorial we will visit is for Franklin D. Roosevelt, elected president for four terms from 1933 to 1945. He led America through the Great Depression and World War II, both incredibly challenging chapters in American history. His memorial is set up as four open-air rooms, each representing one of his terms of office. One room recalls the challenges of the Great Depression, with sculptures of poverty-stricken figures in the bread lines. Roosevelt had polio, which made walking difficult to impossible. It was much easier for him to get around in a wheelchair. Yet another room displays Roosevelt with his faithful dog, Falla. One of America's most popular presidents, John F. Kennedy, is honored with an internal flame which burns day and night. It was lit by his wife, Jackie, at his funeral in 1963. She is now buried next to him. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, where close to 300,000 servicemen and their families also have their final resting place. The soldiers buried over the 624 acres have served in every war from the American Revolution to the present-day conflicts. The natural simplicity of the headstones and their uniform placement creates a stark yet harmonious beauty. In the cemetery is a very grand gathering place called the Memorial Amphitheater. This is where the annual Veterans Day services are held each November or the occasional state funeral. One of the most special places at Arlington Cemetery is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. The tomb contains the remains of one unidentified soldier from each of World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. The Vietnam soldier has since been identified and is no longer unknown. There is an honor guard on watch 24 hours a day, every day. Each changing of the guard, often hourly, is accompanied by a ceremony. Sitting atop a hill overlooking the cemetery is Arlington House. It was the 30-year home of Robert E. Lee, but was confiscated by the government when he left to lead Virginia's armed forces in the Civil War. The estate was then turned into a military burial ground that is now Arlington National Cemetery. Nearby is a memorial statue to those who have served and died as U.S. Marines. This statue is known as the Hiwo Jima Statue, but its formal title is the U.S. Marine Corps War Memorial. It is a bronze rendition of an historic moment in World War II on the island of Hiwo Jima, when five Marines and a Navy Corpsman raised the American flag on the small island. It is symbolic of the struggle the Americans faced against Japan in World War II and is dedicated to all Marines who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of their country. Back near the Lincoln Memorial is a dedication to the soldiers of the Korean War, which took place from 1950 to 1953. This memorial is a series of lifelike statues representing a squad of 19 U.S. servicemen on patrol in the windblown, rugged terrain in Korea. The soldiers are shown as being heavily armed and protected against the elements by their ponchos, a statement about the harsh weather and challenging conditions. The anxious faces of the soldiers show how alert and vigilant they remained at all times. Moving on, we find one of the most famous war memorials of all, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. It is a V-shaped, 247-foot wall of polished granite that descends at an angle into the ground. Inscribed on it are the 58,245 names of those who gave their lives during the Vietnam War. It is meant to be a quiet, protected place to honor these American troops. Although controversial and scorned at the time, it has now become iconic. 
Close by is the Three Servicemen statue, also honoring those who served during the Vietnam War, as well as the Vietnam Women's Memorial. This is the tribute to the soldiers of the First World War, which took place between 1914 and 1918. 400,000 American soldiers lost their lives in the conflict known as World War II. This memorial honors both their service and their sacrifice. Two pavilions surround a pool, signifying each of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans where the fighting took place. Fifty-six pillars surround the pavilions, representing the states, territories, and the District of Columbia. Lastly, this bronze lone sailor statue is a tribute to the men and women who have served in the U.S. Navy. It stands on top of a large map of the world. There are three branches of government that share in the running of the country. This model ensures that no one branch can have too much power over the others. This style of government is modeled after the Romans, whose empire lasted for centuries. The three branches are the executive branch, symbolized by the White House, the judicial branch, symbolized by the Supreme Court, and the legislative branch, symbolized by the Capitol building. Let's look at each of these more closely. The head of the executive branch is the president, who is based out of the White House, the oldest public building in Washington, D.C. His work life is based around the Oval Office. As you know, the White House is not only where the president works, but also where he lives with his family. The judicial branch has its home at the Supreme Court of the United States building. The court itself is made up of nine justices who are appointed for life by the president. It is the highest court in the land and has the final word in many important cases, particularly those related to the Constitution. Next is the legislative branch where the laws of the land are created. It is housed in the very majestic Capitol building. This branch of government is made up of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. They both work out of the Capitol building. The Capitol building sits on top of Capitol Hill in the exact center of Washington. You can see its dome from almost anywhere in the city. No other building is taller than the dome of the Capitol. This is the law. The Capitol building has been the center of America's legislative process for 200 years. Its cornerstone was laid by George Washington in 1793 and has now become a worldwide symbol of democracy. The rotunda is the heart of the Capitol building. There you will see the final resting place of deceased presidents along with other significant historical people such as Rosa Parks, the civil rights heroine. 180 feet above the floor of the rotunda you can see a fresco painting by Constantino Brumidi in 1865. It is called the Apothesis of Washington and depicts George Washington's ascension to heaven receiving an exalted welcome. Besides the Capitol and the Supreme Court, Capitol Hill contains another significant building called the Library of Congress. It was first established in 1800 to serve the research needs of the U.S. Congress. After the burning of the library and the Capitol in 1814 by the British, its collection was destroyed. Thomas Jefferson offered his own extensive personal library collection of 6,487 books as a replacement. As a result of this gesture, the main building of the Library of Congress is called the Jefferson Building. Today it has the world's largest collection of books and special materials, numbering more than 133 million items on 530 miles of bookshelves. It also has on display a rare copy of the Gutenberg Bible from 1455, the first book printed using movable type. It is one of only three left in the world. You probably recognize this building, 
the Pentagon. It embodies a great deal of importance as the headquarters for the Department of Defense. It covers 34 acres and houses 25,000 military and civilian employees. Despite its size, you can get from one point to another in a maximum of seven minutes. Washington is home to a number of artifacts that are priceless beyond measure. Let's look at a few of these. For now, we hope you have enjoyed seeing the many treasures that Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, has to offer. Thank you for watching and listening.